Feed your interest in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies by joining Hall of Fame podcaster Gary Leland on the Crypto Cousins podcast. And remember, we are all cousins in the world of crypto. Hey, thanks for joining me for another review from Unconfiscatable. I'm with Matt from Start9. This is a really, really cool project. And uh, Matt, tell us what we got going on here. What are you building? Uh, Start9 is um, a personal server company. Uh, we make this device right here. Um, you know, a little three inch by two, two inch uh, personal server. Uh, we call it the embassy. Um, we like to think about this as your sovereign territory in the land of the internet. Um, and with this device, you can use uh, your phone. So you plug this thing into the wall and you use your phone to connect to it on the local area network. So and you have an app that they download yeah, on the phone yeah, to work on. Uh, iOS and Android, you know, we call it the companion app, right? It's essentially the screen for this device, the remote control. Um, and on the device, uh, we will generate a uh, mnemonic seed, or you can bring your own uh, BIP39 compliant mnemonic seed. And from that, it will generate a, a key pair and register the public key uh, with the device. So once the public key is registered, then only uh, your phone or a phone that has that mnemonic entered into it uh, can communicate with this device uh, ever again. So it is yours, uh, you, you claim it out of the gate, and, and it, it serves you from, from there forward. Uh, once you are connected to this device, you can then visit the Sovereign App Store, uh, is what we're calling it, to download... You have a lot of names there. <laughs> it's a lot of names uh, because we built an ecosystem, I'm right? Especially. So the, the first impression that a lot of people get when I hold something like this up is they go, oh, you're, you're reselling Raspberry Pis. I said, uh, no. And they go, oh, so it's a full Bitcoin node. I'm like, no. <laughs> uh, it's a computing platform, right? We built uh, something that will take a while for people to fully grasp, I think, which is a, uh, a, a computing platform for the distributed internet. It is a way for um, non-technical, ordinary people to install and run uh, server applications, right? distributed uh, applications. So the first app that we put on the App Store was Bitcoin. So in the push of a button, you can install, uh, download and install Bitcoin Core and have it running on your device over Tor by default. So every well, single is, app. This is a prune version of Bitcoin. Absolutely. Now, yeah. can you explain real quick for my listeners, what our viewers, what a prune version, because I know a lot of my viewers are not gonna know what that even means. Correct, yeah, so so when you sync a Bitcoin node, right, let me let me back up a little bit, because I wanna be, be thorough about this. So Bitcoin is all about consensus, right? Yeah. Money is an application that exists, right? Bitcoin is used as money, because Bitcoin is excellent at garnering decentralized consensus, essentially at creating objective truth without trust, which has never been possible in the history of mankind. There was always somebody you had to trust mm -hmm. for everyone to agree. There had to be an authority who had the final word. Somebody to keep the ledger, bug. Yes, yeah, somebody to keep the ledger. Now the ledger is kept for us by uh, game theory, economic game theory and, and technology, um, and some insight into sort of a economics, right? And Bitcoin leverages these concepts uh, to create something that had never before existed. So to use Bitcoin properly, you need to not trust people because the second you do that, you're kind of undermining the essential value proposition. So when you install Bitcoin on our device or you run a Bitcoin full node, what the software does is right from the beginning, it goes all the way back to January of 2009 and starts checking the entire history of the ledger working its way forward slowly How many to days the tip of the take? chain. How many days? It yes. depends on the hardware, okay. right? So if you're I mean on your device, about six or seven okay. days, right? This is not particularly beefy hardware. Um, it is a, you know, it's running on a Raspberry Pi 4. It's got four gigabytes of RAM. It's got 128 gigabyte micro SD, high endurance. It's not bad hardware, but this is not a supercomputer. We sell it for 199. It's not the best hardware in terms of uh, what you could get from, say, a MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. right? Uh, and that's fine. You don't need much, right? Because six days is not a long time to wait for digital self sovereignty and financial security. <laughs> as, as you said the other yeah. day, if you got an issue with that, you got bigger issues. Yeah, if you, you can't wait six days to get Bitcoin's benefits, full benefits, um, you know, check check your uh, premise. So um, anyway, so you uh, what a prune version is. So to get to the the specific question, is that as uh, you are working your way from two thousand nine to the present your software is checking the history of the ledger. Now, some versions of the Bitcoin Core software, and when I say version, I mean it's the same exact software. It's a configuration, it's a setting, it's an option, right? Um, that by default, 
it's actually going to save every single transaction and block on your device. So you actually have the full copy of the ledger. Right. Um, whereas a pruned version, if you turn on pruning, what it means is that after it validates a set of transactions in a block, it actually discards them and just keeps the proof that they were correct and then moves on to the next block, validates that and discards it and the proof moves forward. So that by the time you get to the tip of the chain, you can be 100% confident that all the data is correct and that you can validate new transactions uh, without trust, but you do not actually store the history. So it's a smaller blockchain. version. It's a, it, it uh, doesn't a take thinner a, version. Yeah, it doesn't take as much storage yeah. space. And there's actually no reason to store the, the whole blockchain unless you wanted to be a block explorer. Like if I wanted to be able to tell my friends, you can use my node to look up some ancient transaction, the details of some ancient transaction, then I need to have that transaction. But to serve myself, yeah. to just be self-sovereign and use this thing in the proper way, you can prune everything. You don't need to store the blockchain. You just need to validate the blockchain. That makes so, sense. Yeah. So, and that's what we do by default, because most of our users are not buying this a personal server. This is not you well, serving Bitcoin to your friends. This is you serving Bitcoin to yourself. Now, the first thing you started with, though, you know, when we got into this, was mm -hmm. the tools that you have on here. And like you said, the first one you have is downloading Bitcoin Core. Yeah. And so what else have we got on here? Yeah, so uh, Bitcoin was the first app on the App Store because we believe it is sort of the beating heart uh, and battle cry of this whole movement, right? None of this would be possible without Bitcoin, not necessarily from a technological standpoint, but even from an inspirational standpoint. It was absolutely necessary for this the, the whole ecosystem to move in the direction that it's moving. So uh, anyway, that was the first app. The second app that we did was we wanted people to feel like they could really get usage out of this, right? So when you put Bitcoin in, it's like, you're not using that all the time. It's kind of in the background. It's doing its thing. Uh, whenever you do a transaction, it may be useful to you, but you don't sort of feel it all the time. So we built an app that we thought would be highly useful right out of the gate, and we call it Cups Messenger, right? So this is a peer-to-peer, -peer, Not to be confused with cans. <laughs> no, that's right, not cans. Um, and Cups because, you know, I have a cup, you have a cup, and they're connected with a right. string. Cans Messenger did not roll off the tongue quite as well. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we wanted a visual representation of this is me and you talking uh, through a tether, right? Um, and, and it's cute too. You know? mm -hmm. So, so uh, we built it. This is our protocol. Uh, we did that because there really wasn't anything out there in the open source community that satisfied our needs. Namely, a way for two people to communicate over Tor without either party having to be online at the time, right? So there's an app called uh, Ricochet that does that, but it requires both parties to uh, have their clients open. So I could only message you if you knew I was going to message you, oh. and how could you know that? So we needed something that worked in the I background. Give you a call and say, yeah. I'm going to yeah. message you. And now we're violating the whole point, yeah. right? So, so we built it, um, and so what you can do with Cups is you hit install. Uh, same thing with Bitcoin. It takes you know, a few seconds to install and fire up on your device. And it, along with any other app that you install, is sort of served up on its own Tor hidden service. What that means is that the app, the, the server application is running on the server, but is accessible over the Tor network from anywhere in the world. What this means is that you do not have to set up port forwarding on your home router. You don't need to get a static IP from Comcast. You are, we are completely bypassing the entire ISP infrastructure. So this is uh, really pretty secure. I it's mean, it's what we're saying. Yeah, it, it, there is, it's unparalleled security. You, not only can you, with cups, message somebody uh, in total privacy, but nobody even knows that you have the app, right? We don't even know. You, we have no insight into our customers. We're, from our perspective, we may as well be selling you a hammer, and then you, you run off and do whatever you want with your hammer, and somebody comes in and says, hey, what's so-and-so doing with that hammer you told them? We have no idea. We yeah. don't, there's no subscriptions. There's no sign-ups. We don't have your email. Right? You come and buy this from, from us with cash. It's yours, right? And that's fine. It's commodity hardware. We don't need to do KYC. We're not selling anything that is, uh, you know, other than what you can buy from the Raspberry Pi Foundation and with a case on it. Right. What it comes with is a pre-installed operating system that allows you to... Y'all wrote this operating system. Yeah, it's called Mesh OS. Um, yeah, we did all of this. <laughs> this is yeah. You've uh, been you've been working on a while on this. You've been working. Um, it's been a five month journey. Uh, the four of us, so myself, Ke Keegan, and Aiden McClelland, and Aaron Greenspan, um, we all left our previous company together. 
uh, locked ourselves in a room and said, let's figure out something. And we toyed with a couple different ideas. And this is once once this came came about, it, it just got steam, and we realized that we were onto something, uh, something big. So what else are y'all? Is there anything else they can download right now on there? Yeah. So, the so there's cups and three apps on the app store. There's Bitcoin, there's cups, and there's an app called Uptime, right? Which is again something that we wrote, um, and it is a very simple app, but very deceptively powerful because it could evolve to become much more than what it currently is. Which is a uh, I watch your back and you watch mine, right? So if I have a server and you have a server, then uh, let's say, okay, let's say I don't have one. Let's just, you have a server and the power goes out at your house or the Wi-Fi goes down. Your server, you, you wanna know that, right? Because your server needs to have uptime. It needs to be up. And so you can't get a message if it's not up. You can't use your Bitcoin wallet if it's not up. But if your server goes down, how could it tell you that it went down if it's down? Right? So there's no way of so knowing. You're like piggybacking with yeah. someone else. It's like sitting back to back with somebody and you're watching each other's back. So it's like you you watch my server and I'll watch yours. And if your server goes down, I will send you an email to your normal email, like Gmail or Telegram Messenger. I'll post it to a channel and tell you, like, hey, your server's offline so that you can go and fix your Wi Fi or plug it back in or whatever happened. Um, now, if you have more than one server, then you could watch your own back. Right. You have your servers watching each other. Like if I had one for my wife and I had one for me, we could not only chat yeah. to each other with yeah. cups, yep. then we could watch each other's back. Yep, absolutely. And you can both be running your own Bitcoin nodes, and what's coming next is really exciting. Okay, so what's this? What, what, give me the scoop here. <laughs> what's coming next is uh, email. Okay. So you'll be able to run your own private email server. Would that be like a dot .onion? Uh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah you, I would send an email to you know so-and-so at dot .onion, um, but you will be able to send emails uh, and receive emails from Gmail, it's just that only half of the equation is going to be Oh, private. that's pretty cool. Yeah, so we're sort of backwards compatible with the legacy system. That's real cool. Regarding email. Now, email is not ready yet. Email is deceptively hard, right? Like, people think about email as this, like, oh, it's an ancient technology. It's tried and true. Nobody is, you know, oh, getting out of that. <laughs> you know, it's tried and true. Uh, no, it is very, very difficult to set up your own private email server. No, we're going to make it easy, but it's one of the more challenging ones. So it's going to be, you know, a few weeks, maybe in a couple months. Before well, that's very really interesting. You know, something I found really interesting, I think this is a great story. Uh, I think you guys should write a blog post or something on this. Mm -hmm. When y'all were coming here, uh, one of the guys, that, you know, one of your developer guys, mm -hmm. I can't remember which one it was, said he plugged this into a cigarette lighter, wi fi it to his laptop, and was running yeah, a while mode they drove out here. while they drove out here in like a 98... Yeah. Oldmobile or something. That's right. Yeah, it's That's, an old phone call. Because <laughs> I saw an article about somebody ran a Bitcoin node on a Tesla the other day, and it was a real big article. Yeah. And so that's like a hundred thousand dollar car they're running it on. Here we're using an old car <laughs> and a cigarette lighter, and you ran a node. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. No, we're we're gritty, right? right? So this technology is like a lot of people talk about like getting off the grid. You know, they talk about um, sort of opting out of all the surveillance and the technology and the Tesla. It's like. This is a way to get off the grid without leaving the grid, right? It's like putting on a cloak. It's right. like an invisibility cloak, but it's gritty. Like it doesn't, it doesn't depend on, on, on a Tesla. It's just a chunk of hardware that was designed in such a way that you could plug it into a cigarette lighter, you know, route some uh, hotspot through your laptop this is a little sophisticated, right? We don't expect people to, but to it, do this. It, it, but it can be done. But I can do a blog post with three steps on how to yeah. do it, and you could be in the middle of the desert on the road. As long as you have a, even a weak cell signal, you can you can access your money. You can send a totally private message to somebody on the other side of the world without any middleman or trust whatsoever. This is whatsoever. pretty new stuff here. This is really it's, it's a little like when once you realize the power of being able to control your own money have truly private conversations in digital form, right? The, messaging somebody on cups is like taking them into a secure basement, hiding in a Faraday cage and whispering in their ear with no recording devices around. It is completely private, but now you can do it to somebody on the other side of the world with a push of the button and nobody, we mean nobody, can see it or spy on it. It's a little dangerous. Yeah, it sounds a little dangerous when you, when you say yeah. it like that. Now, where can people get this at or see more information on this? Um, about us, it's yeah. start9labs.com. We also have a Twitter handle of start9labs. Uh, you can subscribe to our mailing listserv to get updates, and that's right on the website. 
Uh, we also have a Telegram group channel, community channel, where you know any questions, uh, people can benefit from the questions of others. It's like a giant group right. community help forum. Um, and yeah, I mean we're we're brand new. Uh, our you know we're not well known. This is our first public appearance. We have been hiding in a cave for five months, building something special. And, and at the rate you're going, you're going to sell out today. We're going to first match. Sell out. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I posted that yesterday when I saw it. He almost fell out of this. I bought the first one. I was a believer. So yeah, I the he first did. One. He came over and scooped it right up. It was awesome. Um, and the first 100 are engraved. So nope. we, I, we, I didn't even know that. We wanted to give a little special kick to our early buyers. And so we are engraving them, you know, 20 of 100, 21 of 100. And uh, who knows? I, uh, do something big. And uh, item. later I'll do a package opening so you can see what comes in the container. And then you can follow me as I... Uh, go through my travel and setting it up. Yeah. Anything you want to make sure and cover that we might not have before we get out of here? Um, no, I think that was pretty comprehensive. Yeah, I uh, think it was very comprehensive. I think yeah. it was very good, but very well explained. Yeah, what, what, what we are most proud of, and I think this will come through in your later kind of setting up demo, is how easy this is. Mm -hmm. Right? We, we have tested this on our own uh, families and, and non-technical friends, and um, it is, it is uh, you know, equivalent to, you know, in the 1980s, running a personal computer was this like obscure hobbyist activity. And coupled with, why would I ever need a personal computer? Right now, we're all walking around with them in our pockets, pockets yeah. right? And it's a button, it's a swipe, and you send an email. Um, and we're pissed off. We got to wait 30 seconds for something to come yeah, back. I yeah, know, right. Remember the <laughs> earlier days of the internet? It took you it like longer it, than that it, just to get online. AOL, you yeah. dial up. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah, and and um, now it's 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 the expectations are so high. But here's the thing: is in the, I think it was in the 1970s or 80s, I don't remember, uh, IBM was known for sort of putting out the, the messaging that there will only ever be a need for like four or five computers in the world, right? Major governments or large corporations right, right. or a university and who needs a computer? Um, and here's the, here's the crazy part. They were right. There are only a few computers in the world. This is what people don't realize is that when you open up your phone, you think of this thing as a, uh, a pocket computer or your laptop as a computer. These things are more properly referred to as remote controls. They are a, a screen that is remote controlling one of Amazon, Apple, Microsoft, or Google's computers. Every single thing that you push on your phone Happens somewhere. sends a message to a computer that is in one of their bunkers. All you're doing is renting space from them. There's only a couple computers in the world and a shit ton of remote controls. Well, there you go. That's what the need is for this. This, this is your computer. Everything that you touch on your phone goes to your computer. Nobody else is involved in the equation, and that is radical. Nothing like this has no, existed before. Yeah. You could do it if you were a hobbyist or highly technical, again, like the 1980s. But not like uh, the average show on the street. No way. But we are doing, we, we hope, we are doing what Apple and Microsoft did in the 1980s for personal computing, except we're doing it for personal servers. There's a new computing revolution on the horizon, and we think we're at the forefront. Well, I look forward to see what you have coming. And I look forward to downloading the email for sure. Yeah. And I think this is really, really exciting stuff. And thanks for taking the time. And I hope you enjoyed another product review from Un Confiscatable. Confiscatable. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me. I know, I enjoyed great. it. Thanks yeah. everyone for watching. Bye. This is a Bitcoin Boomer production.